Well, I haven't spoken to you for a week. Tell me, um, what have you learned or realized or, you know, become aware of? Well, I'm sorry to say that there's witch, witch hunts going on in uh, Libya right now, in Tripoli and other places. Uh, you know, they're, um, they're hunting people now and killing them in their homes. I mean, it, you're just making me think of Iraq. You know, in Iraq, they, they killed off all these professors, thousands of them. Yeah. Yes. Well, speaking of professors, I, I know one professor they killed with her family. They killed all the children and, as well, except for one uh, infant who was a few months old. But they, they killed the children who were uh, with her in the home. Uh, so you, you she was a was, very... So, she was a good person. She, 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 she was, she was against violence. She wanted everything peacefully resolved. She was very fair. Uh, her and I used to discuss how the government should uh, give people bad news as well, more bad news, you know, because they were, they try to tweak the news a little too, right, for morale. And I said that, you know. It, it, in the long run, and uh, in the long run, it's better to always be very upfront with the people, even if there is a war. And she was on the, of the same opinion. Very good woman, an academic, you know, and uh, she didn't deserve to be killed. Man. Other people have been killed. Their bodies haven't been found. You know, the family knows they're dead, but the bodies haven't been found. Um, they're cheap and dirty. They've had. They've probably had these professors you talked about on computer lists outside of Libya you know these people were targeted and lined up for it and and you say uh, she, she was for peace but they, they, they've got a whole history yeah, of bombing people but they, they've got a whole history of assassinating people that are for peace you know it's no no listen I know that the king for starters uh, uh, you know Many in, in Central America, many leaders of the Catholic Church were killed. Uh, you know, and in fact, the U.S. State Department gave a very bad answer to one of the heads of the Catholic Church. Uh, obviously, Iraq. They killed all the professionals and, and academics. All the uh, in Iraq, there was there was a genocide against professors in Iraq. Absolutely, thousands killed, targeted. The um, killing the professionals and professors. So you know, unfortunately, um, Gaddafi just made a speech. You know, on RITV. I guess you you you've been watching RITV. I mean, it's all in Arabic, but that they're. Uh, that's where you hear what Musa Ibrahim and uh, uh, Gaddafi have to say. They're exclusively being broadcast on RITV, which is based in Syria. And there's a lot of solidarity now between Syria and Gaddafi. But um, uh, these, these things should have existed sooner. It should have existed sooner. Um, the solidarity uh, between Libya and Syria, uh, the people, yeah. people to people. Yeah. Um, well, it's, uh, it's even a bit beyond yeah, I'm people. I'm sorry to say, but we're speaking of this subject that they're doing the same thing to Syria. Oh, for you know? sure. For and sure. They're, they're marginalizing the authentic opposition in Syria for, for a pseudo foreign opposition that they control. You know, there's a transitional council for Syria. None of them have lived in Syria. They all lived outside. Okay? Sounds like they recognize... That's what I've been example, told about the Afghan one, government as well. Bad one, for example, refuses to categorically uh, announce whether if he's in charge of Syria, he would, would he recognize the state of Israel or not. He refuses to, to answer this. You know, where is the transparency? I'm not making this an issue about recognizing Israel or not, but this shows that this is this is a politicking uh, person who's not transparent. Okay, and the BBC and BBC Arabic and other uh, Al Jazeera have given this guy a major platform. And if you look at this guy's resume and CV uh, of what associations and organizations he's involved with, you're going to see this is another one of Washington's men 
in an Arab country they want to take over. Sure. This is it's interesting. There's a whole pattern developing in every country, the same type of story unfolding. You know that Bernard Levi is due to be in Algeria on Thursday. There are news reports to say... Uh, yes. Well, his friend is in the Transitional Council for Algeria, Algeria I believe, or involved with it. In, in he Paris, spoke about yeah. Transitional Council to Algeria, Algeria, and I can tell you that uh, the Human Rights League tied to Algeria. It, it, it is, it, it, the mother of that network, the hub for that network is in France. And one of the members of that organization is friends with Bernard Henry Levy. Oh, for sure. So, I'm not uh, surprised at all. Uh, it, it, he was actually born in Algeria, so maybe they can't refuse him entry. I have no idea. But um, uh, they're gonna, Gaddafi just said today that, that NATO can't keep bombing forever. You know, and as soon as they stop bombing, then then uh, the Libyan army will will win. But um, I'm afraid they can bomb forever. They've been bombing Afghanistan no, for can't. ten years. Out of bombs. They're ru they're running out of bombs, and um, there has been a strong counteroffensive for the last few days. Yeah, big time. But still, no. they're being bombed. You know, I mean, I mean, they're, they're, you can't fight the bombs from the sky. Yeah, but, uh, the Lebanese were bombed. Okay. Uh, Omar Mokhtar was bombed. Uh, Ottoman Libya was bombed. Let me tell you about Ottoman Libya. The Italians bombed Ottoman Libya, okay? And that was when strategic bomb uh, became uh, uh, a new, a new uh, uh, strategy for war. The Italians used it against Ottoman Libya, and the Ottoman surrendered, but it, I don't think it was strictly on the bombings, because you can't win a bomb, a war, and every military analyst knows that, by just bombing. You need boots on the ground. It's That's where the rebels are. It's That's where never, NATO special forces are. So the Americans there. sent four U.S. troops last week, and now they're sending another 12. Uh, where did you learn about that, four special Oh, that, that was uh, majorly publicized. They, they were given the, the brief to open the American embassy. That's why four U.S. soldiers were being sent there. Okay. But now, now... There was four were captured as well, months ago. Really? That's why I thought you were mentioning that, and might have, they might have been... No. Four were captured, and they were trying to negotiate. Yeah, They've caught perfect. 17 foreigners. You know that. They were... Uh, they caught a lot of people. They caught... Could, they caught Qatari troops, they caught uh, yeah. Italians. Yeah. Uh, but the Libyans wanted to use all this as negotiating pieces. So they never came forward with all the evidence they had. There was people on the inside always um, ruining things, you know, obstructing things on the inside. But the Libyans had an incredible amount of evidence and they had a lot of cards they could have played at the international level, the diplomatic level. Well, it feels I'm like the sorry. it feels like the Arab League betrayed Libya more than anyone. No, no. Listen, the Arab League. We should not be surprised about that. They betrayed it. It's become uh, a gourmet dinner for NATO or the United States or Britain. They did the Palestinians. They betrayed the Palestinians first of all. Sudan. They betrayed Lebanon when it was being bombed. In Lebanon, they called it the Arab conspiracy against Lebanon. They betrayed Ba'athist Iraq when President Saddam Hussein was the head of state. Uh, they will betray every. They'll betray each other. There's they have no faith in that league. It's a hollow league, and the, the leaders there have nothing in common but the halls. They'll all backstab each other, and as many call them, there's a reason why they're called half men. You know, it's an Arab expression which is uh, very insulting. But there's a reason why they call each other half men. Those aren't my words, but. There's a good reason why they call each other half men and their intelligence agencies work against each other and they also work to please each other. Uh, they work to please each other. 